Hello, James Flotten here with the Minnesota Space Grant Consortium. I'd like to talk about avionics bays, typically called AV bays, for high power rocketry. An avionics bay, an AV bay, is a place to put electronics that is going to be separate from explosive charges. So typically you'd use an AV bay to perhaps mount a data logger, although that could also be mounted in or close to the nose cone, and especially for a dual deploy rocket to mount the avionics that is necessary to fire the explosive charges, in particular, the explosive charge that brings up the main parachute when you get close to the ground. So first of all, here's a high power rocket. There's the rear, there's the nose cone. And this one has a completely demountable, completely separable, removable avionics bay mounted in the middle of the rocket. I can just barely see it. It's actually about this long, but it's built inside of a coupler tube and the coupler tube keeps the upper and lower airframes lined up with each other. And then we have a switch band, which is glued to the avionics bay. And that allows us to see at least a fraction of it at all times, even when the rocket is assembled. So again, remember, this is the upper section. So just memorize, because you won't be able to see it all in the video. Upper section is lighter color, lower section is darker color on this particular rocket. And then here's the avionics bay. So the avionics bay, again, is a coupler tube. I'm going to actually separate the rocket. So I took off the upper section. I took off the lower section. And then here I can see the avionics bay. So before I switch over to another camera and show this in more detail, let me just point out, again, this is the top, this is the bottom, and it, you should have it labeled. So you see that arrow there? That arrow indicates what is up. On both ends of the avionics bay, you will have a bulk plate. And so if I look at the top end, first of all, I see an eye bolt. And then here is something to attach to the top of the rocket. I also see a terminal block. This is allowing me to attach and detach wires very easily. So in other words, I'm going to run some wires from the avionics on the inside through the bulk plate to the outside, attach them to the terminal block, and then I'll run wires from the terminal block to the explosive charge, to the e-match. And then if I fire the e-match and want to replace the e-match, I can do so at the terminal block without having to open up the avionics bay at all. Um, one more thing that is up here, two more things that are up here. One is a cup. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to put e-matches inside of the gunpowder, inside of a maybe a little piece of a glove, like a nitrile glove or something like that. And then I place that inside of the cup. That just gives me something to hold on to it. So that cup just is a place to place expl explosive charges. And it's not far away from the terminal block. I also see sticking out here threaded rods. And there are nuts in the threaded rods. And so here's one threaded rod. If I turn this over, this happens to be a three inch diameter rocket. There's another nut and another threaded rod. And it's the threaded rods that hold the strength for tension because when you fly the rocket, you're gonna pull hard on this, you're gonna pull hard on this, and I need the threaded rods. Here I can see the threaded rods on the lower end. They happen to have wing nuts instead of regular nuts. Um, depending on the size of your rocket, you may, not, may or may not have space for wing nuts, but they are easier to open up without using tools. So here it is vertically. So I have regular nuts, possibly even lock nuts on the top. I have wing nuts on the bottom. And for the most part, my access will be from the bottom. In fact, let's just take out those wing nuts and see what it looks like from the bottom. So here I am undoing the wing nuts on both of the threaded rods. There's one is off. Here's the second one is off. I'm going to take off the bulk plate. One thing to notice about the bulk plate is it actually has two diameters. I call this a self-centering bulk plate. So the outer diameter here, the wider diameter, is the same diameter as the coupler tube and just barely fits inside of airframe. And then the inner diameter, a little hard to see, but there is a step right there. The inner diameter is able to fit inside of the coupler tube. And so when I place this on the end of the coupler tube, it tends to hold itself in the center, a self-centering bulk plate. If I look on this end, I see two holes for the two threaded rods. I see the fact that there must have been a hole, there is a hole, because the eye bolt has to go through 
And then it sticks out away. So be careful when you're designing the inside of your ab bay that you make sure you allow for the fact that there's going to be a nut and possibly even some fraction of the eyeball sticking out on the inside. And then there's some smaller holes. Those are holes for the wires to go through. Right now, the wires are not in place. And then if I look inside, here's what I see. I see a sled. So the sled is the place to put your electronics. There's not much electronics on this one right now. There's a battery. Uh, there's a place where electronics used to be up here. There's some wires. But in fact, the electronics have been removed. And um, it would fly in this direction. So again, up is labeled. And... Um, when you mount your battery, mount it so that the terminals of the battery are down. This is actually a requirement of the Tripoli Club here in Minnesota, at least. So that when you accelerate vertically, it has a tendency to push your battery even more deeply into your connections instead of having your battery possibly come loose from the connections. So mount the battery with its connectors on the bottom. And then um, that battery happens to be inside of a battery holder. And then there's one, but they're could potentially be several zip ties to hold the battery down. And then up here is where the avionics, the electronics would be attached. And then here's one more thing to think about, and that is you need to get the sled to hold itself onto those threaded rods. So in this case, there's some cross pieces that are perpendicular to the wooden sled and there's holes in them. And so the threaded rods went through those cross pieces. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip over to another camera and show you a few more sleds including some sleds that actually have more thorough electronics on them. So set this rocket aside. But one more thing to look at this particular sled, and that is this sled, holding it properly, has over here a switch. That's a screw switch. It's glued down, and then you have to use a screwdriver to screw it to close that switch to turn things on. Notice the, the switch in this case is attached to the sled and would be accessed by a hole in the airframe. Presumably that hole halfway up the sled is in the switch band. So somewhere in the switch band, there's a hole through which you can put a screwdriver and turn that switch if you decide to build with a screw switch of this sort. Okay, switching over to another camera. Okay, so here are a couple more uh, sleds. Um, so this particular sled actually has the battery. It actually has an altimeter. It has a terminal block to allow you to put wires together on the sled. And then it also has a screw switch attached to the sled. Um, this one is a little bit different though. It basically has some big gouges here. Those gouges are to allow for the eye bolt, which is coming in from both ends. Sorry, here we go. Uh, coming in from both ends to accommodate that. And then it's a little bit different from the last one because the way the threaded rods are attached is that they went through tubes, which are glued to, in this case, I would call this the bottom. And then the avionics, in this case, is on the top. On the other hand, sometimes we put the avionics on the bottom, possibly in between the tubes or in between the threaded rods, and we might put other electronics on the top side. So there's another similar design. And then this is the one that's the most thoroughly wired up. So I think I'm going to wait for a moment before I look at that one. Let me just pull out one more ab bay. So here's an ab bay for a four inch diameter rocket. So this is physically bigger. I see the words right here that say up. And so if I look up here, I see the bulk plate. I see the uh, terminal block. I see the cup. Oh, I even see the remnants of an explosive charge, which was sitting inside the cup. This one has already been exploded. And then the wires from the explosive charge went to the terminal block. And then the wires from the terminal block, just barely can see them there, go into the av bay. So this is very similar. It's got a switch band, happens to be a little wider than the last rocket. It has an overlap region above and below the switch band to go onto the upper and lower sections of the airframe. It has top and bottom labeled. Oh, ah, and here's two more things that are slightly different. This one happens to have a window in it, allowing you to see inside of the av bay and see what's going on in there, perhaps flashing lights or something. So that's an interesting feature. And then one more thing is that this particular one actually has a switch, a screw switch, which is mounted on the switch band. It's not mounted on the sled. It's actually mounted on the external part of the avionics bay. So that's another approach. And then if I take a look at the bottom here, I see threaded rods. 
Let me open those. Let me just take a look inside of this avionics bay. I won't pull it all apart, but you get the idea. First of all, I need to get these. Wing nuts off. And then I pull off my self-centering bulk plate. Ah, and in this case, there are some wires attached. So those are wires that come from the inside of the avionics bay through the bulk plate and go to this terminal block. And then on the other side of the terminal block is again, the remnants of an explosive charge that was inside of a glove finger. And then those wires go into the electronics and the electronics are in there on a sled. On the other hand, that particular sled is actually being held in place by two more nuts. So essentially this sled is shorter than the entire avionics bay. And so it would have rattled around. It would have slid around during the flight. Probably not a good idea. So whoever built this one took two nuts, put one nut here, put one nut here, and then pushed the sled as far forward as they could and then used the nuts to hold it in that spot. So what that means is it's not so easy for me to pull it out of there, um, which is fine. You know, I could probably pull it out from the top side. There, ah, I can pull it out from the top side. And in this case, what I see is, first of all, a lot of wires. Some of those wires, in fact, go to that switch, which is mounted here. Some of those wires go to the upper bulk plate. Some of those wires go to the lower bulk plate. And of course, all attached to the altimeter, which I can see. I'll talk about that in a moment. But in this case, the altimeter is mounted on the bottom side in between the two threaded rods, which gives me the entire top side for mounting other things. So this particular ab bay, which is a pretty large ab bay, um, has extra electronics, not perhaps for firing charges, but for making measurements of various sorts. So here is something that is a data logger of some sort, perhaps a home-built data logger, perhaps a little bit like a paddle data logger. In fact, I can see a GPS here, a pressure sensor here, I can see an IMU here, and then I can see a microcontroller here, which is going to log the data. So what I want to do now is that that more or less completed our bay aside and look more carefully at the wiring on this one. So this particular avionics bay is the one that I have in hand that's most thoroughly wired with the wires most easily visible. Um, let me notice a few things. One thing I notice is that the crossbar here is broken <laughs> and the crossbar here is missing. So I guess this isn't quite ready to go. It has up labeled. It has the battery and the battery has its terminals at the bottom. So that's correct. It has wires that run from the battery terminals to the, in this case, this is an AIM USB altimeter. Okay. And then Every altimeter is different, so you have to pay attention to the wiring. If you use a Raven, it will be different from this one. If you use an AIM Extra or if you use a Stratologger, each of them will have the same functionality, but slightly different wiring than this one. But let me just point out what I've got here. First of all, these white wires here are actually wires that go to a switch. So in this case, the plan was to have this device turned on by a switch, and the switch was going to be mounted on the tubing and notice these wires are actually quite long. I won't unwind them, but these wires are long enough that I can attach that to the tubing and still slide the sled in and out without having to disconnect anything or break anything. So fairly long wires that go to a switch that's attached to the switch band, possibly from the inside and reachable from the outside. And then I also have two sets of wires here. These would be the wires that go to the explosive charges. And these wires are white. Just to distinguish them from those two, these are the important colors in my thinking. Blue. Blue means I want this explosion to go off in the blue sky. In green, I want this explosion to go off when I'm close to the green grass. So blue, these are the wires that go to the drogue charge. And the drogue charge is mounted below, down here, below the sled, below the avionics bay, closer to the motor. And so definitely these wires are going to head down. And then the green wires are going to the main charge and the main parachute is mounted up here above the avionics bay. So these wires are gonna go up and these wires are gonna go down. And the fact that they're red, uh, blue and green helps me remember which wires are which. And then of course they have to be attached to the proper terminal blocks. One final thing to point out here is there's a bunch of notches in the side of this sled. So this sled was intended to fit inside a three inch diameter rocket and it did just barely, but then I wanted to, well, whoever built this actually, wanted to use zip ties to hold certain things down. For instance, the battery 
And what they found out is that they put some zip ties around the battery and those zip ties interfered with getting the sled into the rocket. So they put notches right here and here. So those notches are intended for a zip tie to go over the top of the battery without sticking out any farther on the sides of the sled because the sled was already pretty tight inside of the airframe. Up here, there are some more uh, notches for zip ties. I see one more. This is probably for a zip tie, although I'm a little surprised that there's not one that goes across from it. And then here is a place that one could put, in fact, probably used to have some extra avionics, some extra electronics. This is the avionics that does the work for you. This is what fires the charges and senses how the rocket is moving. And so it knows when to fire the charges and you program it to do so. And then this is a place for extra avionics just for fun, shall we say. Also notice this notch here and this notch here, those notches look like they were added at the last minute. Those are to accommodate uh, the nut that is going on to the end of the eye bolt. And it turns out this is just big enough for the nut and not really big enough for the eye bolt to stick out itself. So that said, probably that eye bolt got sawed off. So the idea is the eye bolt was installed, the nut was put on to hold it onto the bolt plate, and then the rest of the eye bolt was sawed off so that it didn't stick out any farther than necessary. And then it went right into this slot here. So the more of these things you can think about in advance, the more careful you can build your sled. On the other hand, this particular sled was functional, but there were a bunch of minor details that had to be added to it kind of late. And then, of course, the threaded rods go right down here and right down here. So I just need to make sure that they're far enough apart so that these things can all fit, in this case, in between them, and that these things are centered, or if not centered, at least close enough to the center so they don't strike the threaded rods, both of which will be on either side on the bottom of the sled.